Hey everybody, welcome back to Nailed or Failed Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about how to modify the Harbor Freight flagpole so you can run your Starlink receiver network cable up through the middle. We'll talk about the parts and pieces you need to do this along with some modifications and things to look out for. Let's get to it right now on Nailed or Failed Reviews. All right, thanks again for joining me on Nailed or Failed Reviews. Now we, like a lot of people these days, are investing our money in things like Starlink satellite service and so today we've come up with an idea that we thought we'd share with everybody out there who's looking for ideas on how to mount the starlink to their camper trailer and specifically with this harbor freight flagpole that everybody uses and there's a reason why and we'll talk about that in a second if you want to run the network cable from this uh, unit here through the flagpole there's kind of a process here so i wanted to talk about it so let's check it out all right now before we get into the installation Let's talk about a few things you need to look out for when you're talking about modifying the Starlink equipment and getting it installed on your camper trailer. For the cable, for example, to go into the trailer, like say on your house, you know, everybody's house where the wires come in uh, for the phone or for the electric, they meet at the back of the house and then connect to a junction box and then there's wires that run through the wall, right? So there's no way from Starlink to properly do that, number one. So you have to figure out how you're going to get your wire from the receiver that's going to live out here into your trailer. So I'll show you how I did that in a second. But again, it's going to vary for everybody because of their, their setup. Starlink uses their own special end here. And this is just the end on that goes into the receiver. It looks like a mini HDMI kind of, but it's bigger. People are cutting this and adding a regular RJ45 connection on the end, and it's working fine to uh, create a plug on the outside of their wall and run it through. So those are some of the, the downfalls of this. Um, and it's just things you gotta be aware of. Like, you know, when you're fishing this line here, they say again, this is a, a portable unit and you know what they've done is you can see they have like this little gasket on the end of the plug uh, but there is no cover for the plug so as you're fishing it through uh, whatever this flagpole for example or your camper trailer walls you have to be sure that you don't get a bunch of junk jammed into there and even when you're storing it you, if you unplug this there is no cap that Starlink provides and of course, there's a bunch of people who have already created a cap, you know, 3D printed version that you can put on there. So check out the article at nailedorfeldreviews.com. We'll have some affiliate links and a bunch of stuff that you can pick up online. And it'll make your life a lot easier when you're saying, okay, I'm going to get into Starlink. And what do I need? What can, what's everything I need to buy online and just get it all here at once to do this. So again, check out that article at nailedorfeldreviews.com and use our affiliate links. We'd really appreciate the support. Okay, so the last thing I'll point out when it comes to, you know, this thing being proprietary with its mount and whatnot is on the receiver itself. You can see it's got this arm that comes off and then it has this area here that's recessed and cut out and what's going on. So this is where your plug is going to go right up into here. It's going to fit into this area right here when it's all the way in its mount. This causes an issue with some of these 3D mounts and this is why I decided to make the video because if you're trying to run your cable from here through the Harbor Freight flagpole, it poses a problem with a lot of these uh, 3D printers that you will find online because they're not meant to run the cable through there. So let's get into the setup and talk about the modifications that you need to do and the parts and pieces that you can do this with and again, it should make your life a lot easier when you're talking about all the stuff that you need to acquire to actually get this mounted to your trailer or RV. Again, our setup that we're going to be using is with the Harbor Freight flagpole because that's really the only option these days to get height uh, up above your camper trailer RV. So the flagpole is pretty sturdy. I'm surprised at how um, sturdy this is. And I only put it up to about 13 feet and um, it was pretty good. So again, if you have to go up all, all the way to 25, um, it might be a little bit wobbly, 
but the uh, receiver unit itself weighs only nine pounds, just, just under 10 pounds. So it's not that heavy, but you know, when you're talking 25 feet up in the air, um, it's definitely gonna be a lever on this bad boy. So what I decided to do is I already had a receiver mount. This is a receiver adapter and you just bolt it to the frame. What I used to have is, is this sitting here to hold my um, big ass, you know, uh, hitch for the weight distribution. What I decided to do is like, oh, that's perfect position for one of those flagpole holders that people will put into their hitch on the back of their truck. So I picked up this version. Again, check out the article at nailedorfieldreviews.com for all the uh, products that we're using here today. This is the Camco version. It does fit uh, this outer diameter of the Harbor Freight flagpole, which sits at around, I think it's like 2.35, I, I believe. Anyways, I'm gonna be leaving this here again with at least at a minimum the flagpole mounted in there and as well as the uh, network cable. Now, a couple things to modify on this thing are adding a main pin to it. So we've got this uh, hitch pin here that I drilled through the whole thing. So this holder and then the flag poles itself. Basically it starts with, I'd say it's gonna be easiest to take this whole thing apart because when you do do something, like you have the flag pole in here, into here, and you're drilling this hole through all of the pieces at once, what happened is it dumped a bunch of shavings into each section and jammed them up where I could almost not get them apart. So your best bet is just to go ahead and remove all these collars and these are what are going to be sitting on the end like you see there on each one of these sections these are just glued on but they're also keyed so you can see that there so you just take a like a rubber mallet like you see sitting over there and you just lightly tap all around the diameter and break the glue you can see they it's just uh, some gla globs of d glue on a couple places and then you you know you're gonna have to use it takes a considerable amount of grip to uh, grab onto this in the pole and break it free and then unslot it from the key there and you can take this all apart so again that's going to be your easiest way to do this number one just to avoid uh, getting things like metal shavings jammed up into the actual compression piece uh, that works to lock all these pieces together. So what I decided to do is just expand these holes to about as big as I could and you can just use a step drill bit to do this and it, it'll work really nicely. It'll make your life a lot easier when you're talking about fishing the wire through here. So just again that's what I've done here is I've drilled out each section and let's see that is uh, what diameter is that? That's an inch and three eighths actually. So I just went all the way through inch and three eighths and you'll be able to have a nice big area for the cable to enter. But that's what we're talking about here. So I got to clean up all these shavings, get this all cleaned up. I'm just gonna use my air compressor to blow it all off and then we'll get this all put back together. Now the last part of it for this flagpole to work with the receiver is you have to get an adapter, or you should get an adapter. I don't think it's completely necessary because um, number one, uh, this a whole thing, you can slip this whole thing into this uh, top end of the flagpole. I mean, you could just drill a little hole and drill it in there and it would, you should be good to go because it's, it's not very uh, much smaller in, in uh, outside diameter compared to the inside diameter of this Harbor Freight piece. So I almost did that and I'm wishing I kind of did uh, because that would have made my life a lot easier at this point. But this is what I wanted to point out if you're deciding to buy the 3D printed adapters to put into the Harbor Freight flagpole end so that your receiver can mount into there. Because this one is meant to run the cable on the outside of the flagpole when this is mounted into there. So again, you know, you can see there's a key in there that's meant to lock on to the main pole off of the receiver. 
into this section here. But what happens is that key, because the, he ran it, this uh, piece is ran all the way up to the top, it jams into where the cable sits when the cable is fully seated into here. So it can't, it won't work. And you can see on the, the feet that they supply with the receiver, that key is actually three quarters of an inch below the top of the base. So this allows the cable to pass through when it's mounted on these feet. And so again, what we have to do here is mount or uh, modify this a key right here. I got basically got to cut at least three quarters of an inch off of it, taper it a little bit and, you know, do that to, uh, to get it mounted so that the cable can run down the middle here. So it is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, this one also actually cracked onto me. The way that they make these is they have these ridges on here that are meant to shave off as you're pounding this thing down in. And it's a super tight fit. It's not going to come loose. Uh, but what it did on mine is it deformed the end of the flagpole. So it created an edge on each one of those little splines that he uh, printed onto there. And now it's completely deformed. And so if I pound this out and want to use something else, I'm not sure how well it fits. Uh, I might have to get a new flagpole. The outside diameter on this LB3D1 was way too big, as well as the inside. I took a wood file and had to file down the inside diameter of this 3D adapter just so I could get the receiver out. I even had put lube on, you know, in his instructions they supply. They say, oh, put some lube onto there. And so I did that and I still, it was so hard to get out of there. And so finally got it out. And then I, again, I sanded down the inside diameter. And so these are the things you gotta look out for with all this junk that you gotta buy just to mount something like the Starlink receiver. All right, well, the last thing I'll point out is how do we have our network cable running into our trailer? Well, I decided to use this uh, shower thing, outside shower that a lot of people have. It comes factory installed. So this is just our, you know, my, uh, my way of the least invasive way until they come up with a good version of uh, coming into the trailer without hacking up the uh, network cable. It's probably something I'll end up doing in the future, just hacking that cable up. Because if you want to move this, obviously I've got it run under the trailer. I'm going to have to unthread it from there and, you know, set it up back here on the back. But these are the things that uh, we have to deal with if we want to have internet. So I've got it all put back together here. I got it lined up with a pin. And so what I'm going to do is just take a marker and put a swipe down each section so that you know visibly I know where to line them up you know as I extend this when I close it back down you know you want to know where it was so we'll make that mark and then make a mark on there as well so everything will line up when we want to have our main pin uh, especially for traveling on the road you know we'll have it down in its lowest position so again I got that all cleaned up we've got a hole uh, drilled in the bottom of this flagpole mount it already had a small hole in there. Luckily, this Camco version has a cap on the welded on the bottom, which is what you want. And then, uh, I, again, I drilled out the hole to about uh, an inch at least. And so we're going to fish the wire, the network wire, up through there, up through the pole. And then we've modified our 3D adapter. Let's see if I can zoom in or something. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of bright out here. But anyways, shave that down just like the version on your Starlink, how this is, you know, that key is at least three quarters of an inch below this surface. And then that allows you to fish your wire through there. So I, I have a, a little burr grinder here. These are perfect for cutting into that uh, 3D material. All right, so I've got my cable end covered up because again, there are, there are some covers available if you check out the article. On the website we'll have some links so you can just buy those right off the bat and it'll save you a lot of worry and headache dealing with this and now i'm going to fish it through here and like i said through that mount and then i'll show you what it looks like at the end all 
All right, well, you can see there, we've got it all set up and powered back on. It's looking for its little buddies up there in space. And turned out pretty good, I think. It's a pretty solid mount. Again, this is in the totally collapsed position. So you can see that the body, the front cap of the trailer is uh, partially blocking it. And it does see that as an obstruction, but I'm still able to get some uh, good speeds through it. All right, and here's what it looks like in the extended position. And it looks like it's oriented itself a little bit differently. And now we're getting really good speeds. So again, if you're interested in the parts and pieces it takes to do this, check out the article at nailedorfailedreviews.com. We'll have all of those parts and everything else that you're gonna need. You can get most of this on Amazon, and it really helps support the channel by purchasing through those affiliate links. So again, find the information at nailedorfailedreviews.com. All right, so a few things about the overall installation. Number one is if you get the 3D adapter and do the modification, it's actually going to hold on to the network cable. It's pushing on it in a way to keep it secured into the receiver so that when you are uh, taking the flagpole and, and pull, pulling it up like this, it's not going to pull the plug out. You obviously want to make sure that down at the bottom, you know, your cable is unfurled, it's fairly warm out or it's in the sun or something so that it's not going to bind up on itself or whatever you're pulling it through. Uh, but that 3D printed piece, like I said, with the mod, is working to hold in the network cable and uh, hold it in as you're pulling the flagpole up. Another thing you're going to have to deal with is the extra cable that you have left. So my plan is to, to get one of those outdoor boxes for lights that has a little entryway, and I'll set that right here and put all my spare cable in there. And that should keep it nice and contained and protected. Now again, at these heights or even higher, uh, that a lot of people might need to do. There is going to be some movement in here. So let me show you. It's, it is quite a bit. And you know, if I, if I don't do anything about it, you can see it's going to bang into my trailer there. And so there's a couple ways to deal with this. Number one is there are uh, pins, hitch pins, that have a little spring and compressor piece or whatever. I don't know what it is. Some little spacer. You put inside of there and then you thread it in and it tightens everything against the receiver body. So I'll definitely be picking one of those up because of how much movement is in here when this uh, flagpole is extended. You also have, uh, on some of these receiver adapters, you have a, a little bolt that they'll have. But this flagpole holder is such thin metal that they used and it fits so loosely inside the receiver uh, that you're gonna have to figure something else out. This is just gonna destroy it for one uh, again, because this is so thin, um, if you keep tightening it down over time, it's just going to crack through it. So again, check out the article for the link for that other hitch pin that will uh, tighten this all up and keep it nice and secure. All right, so here we are in uh, Central Coast. We're at the Mazda Raceway right now. We just spent uh, two weeks on the road already with the uh, whole setup, and it's working out really well. So here's an image of uh, Southern California we were just at, and you can see we've got the dish mounted, and it was pretty low. We had a couple power lines above it, uh, but uh, it saw this tree over here on the right-hand side of your screen as an obstruction, obstruction. Uh, but other than that, it worked out pretty well. So again, now we're at the Mazda Raceway, and we've got it raised up quite a bit higher uh, because this little tree right here on the right-hand side, it sees that as an obstruction. And I still haven't figured out a good way to deal with the extra network cable. You can see I've just still got it coiled up. When I drove, I did have one of these things. This is a cord dome that we used at the house. And so I just wrapped it all up in here because this is one of the only products out there that's round instead of rectangle to hold all your extra cord. So I used this, just stored it here while we were driving with uh, my wood blocks for the uh, landing gear and worked out fine. So now we're at our location, I've got it coiled up. This is working out well, but obviously you might want to find a different solution. Now, as far as driving with it, I didn't drive with the uh, dish mounted or the receiver mounted to the pole. What I discovered is that in the sunlight, that 3D printed adapter uh, flexed and it just softened up and it allowed you to actually pull the receiver right out of the flagpole. So I didn't drive with it on, but like I mentioned earlier, I did add uh, that 
to bolt the hitch pin to tighten down this whole thing. And so we've got pretty much a no movement and it's working out really, really well. It does, does jiggle a little bit, but really only if you uh, push on it hard. So again, check out the article at nailedfieldreviews.com for all the shopping links to buy all these products that you're gonna need to get your Starlink receiver mounted. Like if you like, subscribe, check out the other videos. Thanks for watching Nailed or Failed Reviews.